In this video, we're going to talk about the wolf kishner reduction reaction. So this reaction converts a ketone all the way into an alkane. Now the first step is a reversible step. We're adding hydrazine to get a product known as a hydrazone, which is an imine derivative. Now imines are typically formed when reacting ketones with primary amines and they usually form under mildly acidic conditions. Now once we get this hydrozone, the second step is to add a strong base under high temperature conditions. The heat will favor the formation of nitrogen gas, which will escape from the reaction, and so making the second step irreversible. So that's an overview of the wolf kishner reduction reaction. But now let's talk about the mechanism. So what we're going to do is we're going to follow the mechanism for an imine under mildly acidic conditions. And then once we get the hydrozone, then we'll use basic conditions to produce the alkane. So the first thing that's going to happen is the nitrogen is going to attack the carbonyl group from the back. Initially, oxygen has two lone pairs, but now it's going to have three. So we're going to get an intermediate that looks like this. So the oxygen right now has a negative charge. The carbon is attached to the nitrogen. And we still have our NH2 group. Now this nitrogen has two hydrogen atoms. Whenever nitrogen has four bonds, it's going to carry a positive formal charge. Now keep in mind, amines are formed under mildly acidic conditions. So at this point, we're going to use H3O plus. There's going to be a small amount of H3O plus in the solution at this time. Now the purpose of using H3O plus is to protonate the oxygen with the negative charge. And so now this oxygen will have two lone pairs and the hydrogen attached to it. And we still have the nitrogen atom with its positive formal charge. And that is attached to an NH2 group. So now at this point, H3O plus has been converted to water. So water is going to act as a weak base. And it's going to take away a hydrogen from the nitrogen, put in the lone pair here. So this is what we now have at this point. And let's put the lone pairs back in. So what do you think is going to happen once we get to this point? Well, now that we've regenerated H3O+, we need to protonate the OH group to make it a good leaving group. Right now, it's a bad leaving group. So this oxygen is going to pick up a hydrogen, regenerate in water. And so now we have a good leaving group. And so in the next step, the nitrogen atom is going to use its lone pair to form a double bond, and it's going to expel water. When that happens, we're going to have this, a protonated hydrozone derivative. So the last step, water, is going to act as a weak base, remove the hydrogen, put in the lone pair on nitrogen. And so now we have the hydrozone intermediate. So now that hydrozone has been formed, we need to change the pH of the solution from mildly acidic conditions to strongly basic conditions. 
and we're going to heat up the solution as well to increase the rate of the reaction. So in the next step, the first thing that's going to happen is the base hydroxide is going to remove a hydrogen and it's going to put a lump here on a nitrogen. So the nitrogen on the right now has a negative charge. So what's going to happen now is it's going to take a lone pair, form a pi bond, and then it's going to cause this pi bond to break, put in a negative charge on the carbon atom. Now, once the negative charge is on the carbon atom, giving us the carbonine, that is going to take a hydrogen from water. Keep in mind, we formed water when hydroxide abstracted a proton. So now we're going to regenerate the base catalyst. So here is the first hydrogen atom that we added to the carbon. And now let's continue to the next step. And so once again, we're going to use hydroxide. So at this point, hydroxide is going to take a hydrogen and put a negative charge on the nitrogen. And let's continue that here. Now this part is where heat is definitely needed. As this substrate is heated, nitrogen gas is going to leave from the carbon substrate. The lone pair, one of the lone pairs from the nitrogen on the right, will be used to form another pi bond. And as a result, these electrons will be pushed back to the carbon atom. And so we get a carbonine and we get nitrogen gas as a leaving group. Nitrogen gas is a good leaving group. It's very stable. And once it leaves, it's gone. It's going to escape from the solution. Now, the last thing that's going to happen is the carbonine is going to abstract a proton, regenerating the base catalyst. And the end result is that we're left with an alkane. So that's the mechanism for the Wolf-Kishner reduction reaction. It converts a ketone into an alkane using hydrozone, I mean, using hydrazine in the first step, and then using a strong base with heat in the second step.